Hello, this is GDV Log, and today we're going to continue our game design and game idea development. Um, let's do a little recap of the last part. So we went through the idea of thinking um, what kind of a game. We decided to do a platformer game, and another game was RTS game. Cool! Um, next one we asked ourselves was the, um, what kind of a platformer or RTS game. We tried to ask ourselves questions like, is our game realistic or not, or is it turn-based or not, or whatever. Um, we came up with, um, 3D slash 2D platformer game side-scrolling not realistic real-time cool and the RTS game um, we didn't really handle in that part um, the next one we tried to figure out was the settings for our games so we came up with a um, platform again was set in the future and not in any specific world it's it was just a generic generic game world cool and finally we thought a little bit about our oh whoops the RTS game um the RTS game was a semi realistic 3D RTS slash 4x game set in the future without a single player campaign. Cool. And finally we talked a little bit about details like who slash what is the player. And in our platformer game we decided to make a Swedish um electric engineer with a funny accent and overweight problem and in RTS game we handle multiple characters units okay now we can start detailing the game world now, depending on your game idea so far, this may be the thing you're waited for, or it may just as well be something you don't really see necessary. Anyway, I, I really suggest that you spend t some time thinking about the world and settings. Try to find the bigger image and then start thinking about what kind of smaller elements it contains. Um, let's take a real-life example, the World of Warcraft. It's a well-known MMORPG game made by Blizzard Entertainment. The world is a fantasy world called Azeroth. That's a big image described in one sentence there. Now the smaller elements. The world is divided into multiple continents. There's the Kalimdor in the west and the eastern kingdoms in the east. Then there's the Northrend in the north and there's even the extra-dimensional realm of Outland. Each of these smaller parts of the world contain even smaller parts. For example, Kalimdor has areas called Desolus, Molger, Tanris, and so on. These areas have distinct themes and settings. Like, for example, Desolus is a desert, and Tanris is, again, a desert. Um, of course, I'm simplifying this example quite a bit, because the world design is affected by the storyline which contains wars, different races having struggles and alliances, and so on. But I guess you get the picture. The world of Warcraft has a huge world divided into smaller and smaller parts. The world design has been a major element in WoW, even though the world itself has existed since the first Warcraft game. Anyway, if we compare the required amount of world design in WoW to, let's say, the Angry Birds, of course the concepts are totally different, the game styles are totally different, and of course the world design is in completely 
different scale. In Angry Birds, the world is just a game world. There's no really purpose of detailing the world. And the levels are just piles of stuff and the design of the levels is coming from the puzzle design rather than the world itself. The only thing the world affects in Angry Birds is the theme of the boxes on the background. For example, in the original game, the boxes are just wooden planks or chunks of ice. In the Angry Birds Rio, there's cages and the planks look a bit different and the background isn't just a blue sky, it's a warehouse. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that one of these is good and the other one is bad. I'm trying to say that the world may requi require a lot of detailing depending on your game idea and settings, or it may be totally unimportant. Sometimes it may even be a bit difficult to recognize whether or not your game has a distinct world that needs to be designed and detailed. For example, a shooter game set in the World War II usually requires a lot of information about the locations. The more realistic you want to be with your game, the more detailed your game world has to be. Then again, if you're making a racing game, it may or may not require a detailed world. Again, it depends quite a lot on whether you want realistic locations or not. If you aim for realism, these will be racing tracks around the world, like Hockenheim Ring in Germany or Silverstone in UK. Otherwise you can have made up tracks. Nevertheless, the world design isn't that big of a deal in racing games, though you should always pay attention to it. So, let's start asking ourselves some questions about the whole world. First, what is the world? Like for example, if we are making a World War II shooter game, it's the battlegrounds of WW2. And if we are making a racing game, it's race tracks around the world. And finally, if we're making something like WoW, it's um, it's Azeroth, a fantasy world. Cool. Next question, where is the world? All the locations. Again, if we, we are doing a WW2 game, it's, it can be like um, France, more specifically, it can be Normandy, Cain, like that. Or, actually, we can do different settings for WW2. It can be Finland, my beloved home country. And we can be more specific. It's the Winter War. It's the defense of the Mannerheim line against the Red Army. You can... Um, actually, you can do really detailed um, description of your game world, like this. And if we have a racing game, there's no specific location. It may be real tracks or cities if it's street racing game. Um, you can just make things up if you're not using real tracks, but if you are, you can just use Hockenheim and Silverstone or Fuji track and so on. And again, let's take the real world example. Wow, it's um, we don't really know, we don't know where the world is. It's simple as that. Okay, the next question is what does the world consist of? Whoops, consist of. Again, we can start thinking about these different examples like World War Two. It consists of locations of battles in WW2. 
um, the racing game, famous tracks around the world, or it may be just as well be made up tracks. And the real life example, wow, it's made of continents and realms divided in smaller distinct areas with their own themes. Um, here we start building up our game world. We are actually, if we are doing a World War II game, we already have quite a good picture of our game world. And we can continue. Um, what's next question? Um, what kind of a world we want? And let's think with adjectives. For example, World War II. We want a hostile, chaotic, really atmospheric. I think that age isn't part of the word. These are the word, words that we want to dis use when we describe our game world. We want to make a really chaotic, atmospheric World War II shooter game. Cool. Um, if we're doing a racing game, we want to make the world feel fast-paced, um, dangerous, competitive. Cool. And last, wow, we can describe the game world with words like Beautiful, dangerous, troubled, with all those wars going on. Um, magical. Great. Again, we have approached our, approach our game world design from a different angle. We tried to come up with adjectives that described our world. So, the next question, actually not that question yet, um, let's think, if our game world is divided into smaller parts, for each part we can ask these kinds of questions like, let's see, for each level slash area, what's the reason for this level or area? Let's see. Um, this may be a wordless question, or it may just as well be a key question. Um, it may reveal a problematic area that doesn't fit into the game for some reason. For example, you are making a World War II game, and you have a place like Sweden. Really? Why? Um, of course, if it's placed in a... Um, what do you call it? Like, um, if you want to make up stuff, you can do that, but if you want to make a realistic WW2 game, then Sweden isn't really that good of a location, because nothing really happened there. So, we can just cross off that from the list, and we can take, for example, um, Okay, um, let's take Normandy. Why? Because allies infiltrated there. One of the key moments of WW2. Cool, we have a reason for this area. And let's see. Um, then we ask a question. What's the theme of the level or area? And again, we have a theme. It's grey, hopeless, um, people dying around battle. There. Just a few words that describe the theme of the Normandy. Um, Let's take another example, the racing game, um, and 
hunger ring. Reason. Well, it's a well-known track. Why not? Um, team. Um, sometimes you come up with this kind of stuff that you can just answer. Team. Hungry? Racing? Just... You don't really need that if you can't come up with anything. Um, and let's take a couple of real-life examples. Let's take first Wow Stormwind, the capital of human race. We have reason. It's storyline-driven reason. Or multiple reasons for it to exist. And the team. Again, we have troubles coming up with teams. It's is it teams like human or normal? It doesn't really tell anything. But another example we can take from WoW is Undercity. Again, reason is the same. Storyline. But the team. This is much easier. We have sewers and the city of undead. There we go. Um, again, we have created more and more information about the game world. Now we have the outline for our world. Um, next we can start thinking about the mechanics of the world. And by mechanics I mean the ways to traverse our world. Again, in World War II game like Call of Duty, each level is one distinct location in the world and there is no free traveling between the areas. In a racing game, the different tracks are available via track selection, so there's no traveling between the areas inside the game. And in World of Warcraft, all the areas are connected so the players can travel from one area to another and the method of travel can also be decided by the player. For example, you can walk or ride a horse, or you can fly with your own griffon or dragon. You can also take a travel route, which connects a static nodes of the areas to each other. Then there's a subway system that connects two cities, Ironforge and Stormwind. And of course you can take portals to teleport between places. So when you think about the world mechanics, you can get a pretty good picture just by looking at your game idea. If you are making a racing game, you don't really have to design the traveling part, but for huge fantasy worlds like games like WoW, you have lots and lots of designing to do. And I guess that's it for this time. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. This is GDVlog, thank you for watching.